my channel. Today we'll be talking about Phalaenopsis orchids and general care tips for them and we'll also talk briefly about repotting. Now when caring for any orchid there's three critical needs that you need to consider um, and those three things are light, temperature and water. Now sometimes these needs vary seasonally but luckily the Phalaenopsis orchid requires the same care pretty much year round. So I consider fowls some of the easiest orchids to grow inside the average home and the complex hybrid Phalaenopsis have been hybridized to withstand normal indoor conditions. So they grow and bloom really easily provided these minimum conditions are met. Now there are other minor factors that play a role um, in the health of your orchid um, and those cultural factors include humidity, um, pH, uh, the medium you choose uh, and fertilizing um, but I do think that if you don't have the light temperature and water culture generally sorted for each um, the specific genera of orchid that you're growing, the others tend to matter a lot less. The only exception to that is fertilizing, which is a must for all orchids, but we're not really gonna talk about that today. So let's start with light, because I think by far, light is one of the easiest things to provide for fowls. Um, they are considered low light orchids, but by that terminology, I think it really means bright shade. Now their leaves don't don't withstand direct sunlight. Um, they do burn easily, um, but they don't mind a little bit of direct sunshine early in the morning or late in the afternoon when it's not too hot. But otherwise, bright shade is best. Um, ideal for them would maybe be an east facing window. Um, I keep them in my grow room, which has a south facing window actually. Um, which in Australia is the opposite to the bright side. So we're in the Southern Hemisphere and in winter, the sun is actually on the opposite side of the house. Um, but look, I guess we have relatively bright 11 hour um, days in winter and this is a really big window. So my fowls actually get enough light in here and they're doing really great. Um, in summer, this room is really quite bright um, even though the sun travels overhead, uh, it's, it's really quite bright, um, though it never gets direct sunlight. So I consider that fairly perfect um, for what the Phalaenopsis orchid needs. Temperature wise, um, the requirements for indoor fowls are also fairly easy to cater for because um, if you're comfortable, uh, you can pretty much assume that they're comfortable. Their sweet spot is probably somewhere between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, um, but they can still grow fairly well between 15 and 35 degrees Celsius. Um, they can go an extra five above or below that for short periods of time, but they really won't perform their best. Um, Phalaenopsis orchids are considered warm to hot growing orchids. They're tropical plants um, and they really, they really hate cold climates actually. So below about 10 degrees Celsius, which I believe is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, um, they start to stress out um, and they might actually show signs of significant uh, deterioration. So they might get cold damage um, and a lot of those cold, cold damage spots can rot quite easily. Um, so having said all that, they will definitely not tolerate frost under any circumstances. Um, and just remember also that though they really love the heat, um, they don't like direct sunlight. So you have to uh, temper that accordingly. Um, humidity. Now, like I said, it's one of those factors that matters for some orchids, but for Phalaenopsis, Look, they don't really care a lot about it. Now, don't get me wrong, all orchids appreciate high humidity, um, but it's not something that we can easily provide, especially as a home grower. Um, but 
I guess in terms of the Phalaenopsis, I'm just touching on this because I want to stress that they'll still grow well and bloom. Even if the humidity is like 20%, though they would prefer more, they can still um, be pretty comfortable with that as long as you water adequately. Um, now in terms of watering, uh, I guess my best advice is that Phalaenopsis orchids like to just dry out between waterings. They're epiphytic orchids, so in nature they're attached to trees um, and they don't naturally grow in any medium. Uh, therefore, their roots do need airflow and oxygen um, and in nature they get lots of ventilation. So this means that when you're growing in a pot, you still need your medium to be quite airy um, and still have some ventilation. So the frequency of watering um, will depend on a number of factors. And the only real way to answer how often to water is that you should water them when they need it. And I know that's a really fluffy sort of piece of advice to give, um, but it really is uh, the way to care for your orchids. Um, and so you water your Phalaenopsis orchids when the roots are just dry. Um, how quickly the roots dry depends on a whole bunch of things. So they will dry quicker um, with smaller pots, on mounted setups, with very airy medium, in hot conditions, um, in dry conditions. So in summer and um, low humidity, you will get quick drying. Um, with increased air movement um, and also to a lesser extent um, the water uptake of the plant is uh, can dictate how quickly your pot dries up as well so uh, plants in really vigorous growth um, stages uh, who are producing a lot of structures will consume a lot more water than a plant that is for example in dormancy um, or you know just resting after flowering so I think as a beginner, the best way to know when you need to water your orchid is to use clear plastic pots. Um, I find it a really easy way to tell if my medium and roots are dry or not. Um, you can see um, the roots, if they're dry, they will start to turn a gray, uh, silvery sort of color. Um, and that's the velamen, um, the coating of the root drying. Um, and you can also see the medium um, sometimes uh, if you've just watered or you know, it's been watered in the previous few days there'll be some condensation on the inside of the clear plastic pot um, another good way to judge is to lift the pot um, if it's plastic and judge by the weight so over time you'll start to learn the difference between a wet or dry pot um, and it becomes quite noticeable so just feel your pot once you water it feel it before you water it um, when it's when you know it's dry and you'll notice a significant difference in the weight um, you can also use your finger to just feel an inch or so into the media with your finger um, to see if the medium's still wet or not just keep in mind that very large pots um, might look dry on the outer surfaces but the center of it might still be wet um, and when you look at the roots, um, if they are a bright green, then usually that will be a really good indicator that um, they don't currently need water, that they're actually uh, hydrated. Um, I plant my Phalaenopsis orchids in a pre-made mix of Orchiata bark, charcoal and perlite. Um, and then I also add some extra lecker beads for aeration um, and a bit of sphagnum for more water retention. I also put ventilation holes on the sides of the pot. I learnt this from Miss Orchid Girl um, and I use just a, a soldering iron from the Home Depot uh, store uh, and it works really beautifully. Um, now I, some people don't like sphagnum, um, I do add it but I don't compress it down a lot and I add it in varying quantities for varying orchids um, but I do put a reasonable amount in for my fowls. Um, I do find them to be quite thirsty orchids um, and I have really hot summers so without the sphagnum 
I'd probably be finding myself having to water them every couple of days in the middle of summer when it's like 35 degrees Celsius, which I don't know, it's probably like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm not too sure. Um, and I just don't think I could keep up with that with the number of orchids I have. So um, it suits me a lot better to put something a lot more water attentive into my medium. <clears throat> Um, on that note, we will touch a little bit on repotting, but we won't go into it too much because um, this is, I guess, advice not on what you should do, but just what I do. Um, and everyone's different with their preferences. So you should watch quite a few repotting videos, ask you know, on orchid boards online, read around, and you decide what you want to do and what's best for you. So for me, all of my orchids... Um, will eventually be re repotted within the first few months of me attaining them. Um, the fowls that you get from the stores, they're often packed in really dense um, sphagnum um, and this suits purposes of transport, minimising watering frequency for the shops. But over time, um, this will suffocate and kill and then rot your roots. Um, so the only time that I'll wait to repot a fowl is if it's in flower and I can see um, a really healthy root system and I can see that the sphagnum is not completely like packed like a rock hard. Um, by repotting I think that I have better control over um, the media and cultural requirements uh, for the care that I can give. Um, so I can look after it better. Along with that, you know, I am eliminating some pests if there are any. Um, and it makes me more confident that I can provide um, good conditions for root growth for years to come. Um, so I guess when deciding when to repot orchids, some orchids uh, tolerate repotting better than others. And I would say that fowls are right on the top of that list when it comes to tolerating repotting. They can withstand it at any stage, I think. Um, you know, as opposed to cat layers, I've repotted them and they've sulked for ages, but I've repotted so many fowls um, and at different stages. So while they're flowering, after they've flowered, while they're um, growing leaves or roots, while they're growing a flower spike, while they're in bud. And I have never, had issues with stunted growth or buds blasting. Um, I guess the only plants that had poorer leaf growth after repotting were the ones that had extremely poor root systems to begin with or rotting stem bases, which you know would have deteriorated anyway. Um, some of my first orchids, I waited to repot after they finished blooming and um, which can be months. Um, and I found a couple of them to still actually be potted inside their little plastic seedling pots which are about an inch in diameter um, which were packed with sphagnum so everything inside that little base was rotten so they had just the seller had just put or the nursery had put the little seedling pot into a bigger pot as the plant grew without unpotting it um, and you know, they were probably the hardest orchids to get to thrive afterwards, but even they've survived and they've rebloomed for me. So if I can rescue those orchids, anyone can. Okay, so everyone, that's the end of the video and I really hope you found this useful. Please let me know in the comment section what you thought of this video um, and I'll see you for my next Phalaenopsis care video where I'll talk about the growth cycle and how to rebloom your orchids next year. Um, so thank you for watching and, and I'll see you next time.